It's been a couple of months since the video launched and even announced and finally Turing. their RTX lineup of graphics cards and their overall sort of software RTX platform. Since this is the, the Christmas New Year period and generally a time for reflection, I thought we would reflect upon the cards and the platform and see what's changed, what the situation is now, and generally if it's even worth your money to pick up these cards anyway. In this video, we're going to be covering three main topics. What supported games are there and what are coming? What the supported games performance is like? And then the pricing for the cards to see if anything has changed there. And then I guess a final topic of just an overall conclusion of what the situation is. RTX is these days. Now I would mention that this is basically opinion, at least for that final part, so I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below as we go through the different sections of the video. With that said though, starting off with the supported games, I want to make it clear that there are technically two sides to the RTX platform. There's the ray tracing side, which Battlefield 5 is currently the only publicly available game with any of those features, and that's actually only the reflections rather than shadows or anything else. And then you have the DLSS side of things. DLSS is their super sampling technology that uses AI to effectively render your frame at a lower resolution and then use some trickery to make it look like and uh, sort of smooth it out so that it looks a lot more like a higher resolution image. Now apparently that's the easier one to implement because a number of people or a number of games have already implemented that feature but uh, it doesn't seem to be very widely talked about or covered that well and generally it doesn't seem to be that big of a, a, a feature so we're going to focus mostly on the sort of core RTX ray tracing side of things rather than the DLSS side. Now with that said, on the RTX side of things, as I said, Battlefield 5 is currently the only game available that has any RTX or ray tracing features. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a game that in theory will support some of these features, especially on the shadow side of things rather than reflections, but uh, even though the game is publicly available, you can go buy it and play it right now, it doesn't have any RTX features and the updated patch for that to add those features in is currently completely to be confirmed and is uh, currently lost in the wind as far as everyone can tell. Now there's also Metro Exodus which is meant to have a number of RTX features, possibly the whole setup, but that game is not being released until uh, the end of February next year, 2019, so bear that in mind you're still a month and a half or two months away from that game being out and it's not clear whether that game will launch with RTX features built in or whether that will also be an after launch pack. And finally, Assetto Corsa Competizione is a game that's currently in early access and therefore is available for you to buy and play, but because it's early access there are a number of even core features, let alone RTX features, that aren't available, so you're likely going to see a after launch patch, and I think it's actually been confirmed that even though this is early access, even when it fully launches, the game will not have RTX features built in, and that will be again an after launch patch as well. Now moving on to the performance results side of things, because, as I said, Battlefield 5 is the only game we can really test for anything like this, that's what we're looking at. I should also mention I don't have Battlefield 5 either, so these are third-party results from Hardware Unboxed and Textbots, as well as uh, a little bit from Hardware Canucks as well. Now, I must say, definitely go check out both of their videos and articles on this because they do a fantastic job of testing. And if you want to see more results than just the ones that I'm mentioning here, then definitely go check them out. And also go subscribe to the YouTube channels because they're both fantastic. But uh, regardless, we've actually had a, a nice little update, especially with the most recent NVIDIA driver and potentially even a game patch as well. Uh, the game went from being completely unplayable, basically, with RTX on, even with a 2080 Ti at 1080p, or at least that was 60 FPS down from 150 to around about 80 FPS still also down from 150. Now this is definitely faster and it's great to see these improvements and we kind of expected a bit of a performance hit but the fact that you're going from 150 FPS to 80 despite having dedicated hardware built into the cards is still a bit of a shock to the system. Now thanks to this update, the 2080 Ti can now handle 1440p at 60 FPS with DXR on or RTX on, but the 2080 is probably still gonna struggle. That's generally, uh, you know, a, a decent 1080p RTX card. Uh, and then when you're looking at the 2070, which is probably the most crazy thing, that struggles at 1080p to even hit 60 FPS, let alone 1440p, and uh, I don't even dare to think about 4K. So um, even with the 2080 Ti, I couldn't really recommend 4k with RTX on so 
yeah, kind of crazy. Now moving on to pricing in our final category here, uh, nothing really is, is majorly changed. There are a few cheaper alternatives or cheaper brands now available for some of the cards. So for example, the 2080 Ti is now available for under a thousand pounds just, and that's a palette brand card on OC UK. Um, but generally speaking, the you know brand name cards like uh, a Zotac or an Asus or a Gigabyte or an MSI, all of those are still the same price, give or take. The 2070 has come down a little bit with options now now as low as £450, but for a Gigabytes or an Asus or MSI card, you're looking at over 550 sometimes even closer to 600 which does make this fairly expensive. And then the, the 2080, uh, you're looking at around about £900 for a Strix card, although you're looking at about 780 for the Zotac one. So what's the conclusion here then? Well, for me personally, unless you're really interested in the reflections that are offered in Battlefield 5, or in theory, the uh, future-proofness of the, the RTX features in some future titles, it's really very hard to recommend them as they're still pretty ludicrously expensive, especially for the performance you get. Well, 10 series stock, especially from new, is dwindling and you're going to find it harder and harder to get good stock for, you know, new cards for the 10 series and therefore these start to look like a better value for money option. It's still generally pretty hard to recommend them at this point in time. I would also mention that bear in mind you are buying into first generation hardware here when it comes to the ray tracing and tensor cores and especially knowing what we know about why the ray tracing performance is so minimal, I can expect that a second generation RTX card cards will be significantly better in their RTX performance uh, with a few extra uh, ray tracing cores and uh, tensor cores so that will be uh, very interesting to see. I would also mention that as I said software support just really isn't here right now. It seems very rushed and it seems like something that uh, is, is kind of surprising. I, I didn't expect this but um, again at the same time uh, it's just not ready for prime time right now and even if you are very excited by the prospect of having better lighting and shadows and stuff in games. Uh, right now it's just a very hard thing to, to recommend as uh, even a, a future proof investment. Now with all that said, as I mentioned at the start, that is my opinion. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Are these cards interesting to you? I know that some of you have, as uh, one person said, drunk the Kool-Aid and bought a card. So um, if you have, let me know what it's like. Let me know what Battlefield 5 with uh, you know, RTX on is like for you and all that sort of stuff. Um, I would definitely love to hear from you. And if you've not bought one or if you deliberately didn't buy one and went with a 10 series or a Vega card for example, also let me know in the comments down below. If you want to support this channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis with live streams on Thursday nights, then make sure you check out the links in the description down below. There's Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links, so whenever you're buying anything, whether it's RTX cards or garden sheds, uh, it doesn't cost you anything to use, but it massively helps me out, so thank you to everyone who uses them. I'm also incredibly grateful to all the patrons who support me every month, and if you want to become one and get some cool rewards for doing so, then you can check out the links in the description down below. You can also check out the links down there for hoodies or t-shirts. There's Tech Team GB related and non-Tech Team GB related designs, so if you want to check those out, feel free to do so. There's plenty of other videos over there if you've got uh, a bit of a Christmas lull and need to catch up on some stuff. And of course, subscribe uh, with notifications on if you uh, fancy seeing more videos like this one or more reviews of graphics cards or anything else. Uh, and yeah, otherwise, if you have any questions, leave that in the comments down below. As I said, I'd love to hear your thoughts, but otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.